Well, hi guys, thanks for tuning in. You know, recently I just received a comment on one of my videos. I think it was for the D850 Bird and Wildlife Focus Settings. And it was from Stephen. And Stephen wrote, Hello Adrian, great video. I have a D750 and am looking at doing some bird photography. Are the settings for the autofocus settings similar to the D850? If not, could you maybe do a video or advise on the correct settings for this body? Could you also recommend a telephoto lens combination for the 750? Well, Stephen, that is a very good point. Can the D750 be set up similar to the D850 for bird and wildlife photography? Well, in this video today, I'm gonna to show you how to do it. I've used the D750 for over four years now and in many different types of situations from landscape to wildlife and bird photography. It's a very versatile camera. So let's not mess around, let's get straight into it. Let's set the D750 up for bird and wildlife photography so it's very similar to the D850. Oh and a quick disclaimer, these are my own cameras. Nikon aren't sponsoring this video in any way. Okay, so I'm set up, I've got my Nikon D850 on the right hand side of screen, the Nikon D750 on the left hand side of screen. Now, the difference automatically straight away, you'll see that on the D850, we've got an AF on button and a joystick button here, whereas the D750 doesn't do that. The great thing about the D850, you can assign individual focus modes to that joystick, to that AF on button, as well as certain AF modes on your preview button and function button. Unfortunately with the D750, and please remember the D750 is two years older than the D850, you can only assign one type of focus. And that type of focus, which I'm going to use, is called group area focus. Group area focus, I've got it assigned to my AF1 button here at the back of the D850. That is literally the focus I use 75 to 80% of the time anyway. We're going to assign group area autofocus to that button on the back here of the D750. To do that, we need to firstly activate this button. We need to go down to the menu, scroll down on the D750 to get that little pencil, and then scroll across to controls. Then scroll down to assign AEL AFL button. Click on that. You'll come up press, it says off. Click across to there, and we're going to assign AF on. So now every time you hold down that button, that's going to activate your group area autofocus as you're tracking a bird or an animal. To assign group area autofocus to this button, you need to come around onto the D750, hold in this little AF button on the side here, use the scroll wheel at the back here, and scroll through till you get to AFC, and then to go to group area autofocus, Use your front scroll wheel here to scroll through until you get to GRP. There it is. Group area autofocus. So already we've set up that button and that button to be exactly the same as the D850. Unfortunately, as I was saying, we can't assign different types of focuses. You can with the D850, but not with this one. You can certainly assign the group area autofocus to that button, as well as your front preview button and function button on the D750, but I think that's a bit of overkill. You don't really need three buttons for the same focus. So instead, what I like to do with the preview button on the front of the D750, I like to turn that into spot metering. So to do that on the Nikon D750, we need to come back over onto the menu Scroll back up to where it says assign preview button. And you can see there, that's the little preview button on the front of the D750. Scroll across here. And we'll just scroll up until we get to spot metering. Now what I use spot metering for is when I've got a darker object, say you've got a black dog running straight at you and you're taking photos of it, or you've got a bird in the sky, it's a quite a dark bird up against a very light sky by holding down that spot metering button while taking shots, you then get a much more balanced, more even exposure image. Now that I've got those couple of buttons allocated, you've got your grip area autofocus on the back here, and then you've got also your spot metering on the preview button here. I'm just gonna go through both cameras very quickly. First of all, if you're a beginner, I suggest you start off in 
shutter priority mode. Same with here, come over onto your D850S. So with shutter priority mode, you set your shutter basically to something like one two thousandth of a second. Same here on the D850, one two thousandth of a second. They're a good starting point for doing animal and bird life. You may not need that shutter speed. Sometimes you might need it a little bit faster. Sometimes you can go to 2500 or 3200, but for more stationary animals, you could probably go down to something like 1 500th of a second. Next thing, just like on the D850, come over to here and scroll across on your dial till we get to CH, which stands for continuous high. The D750 will fire off at six and a half frames per second. The D850 will fire off at seven. So they're practically the same. Now with your ISO, I like to shoot in a range between 100 and 1000. So come back over onto your menu on the D750, come up to your little camera icon, scroll down to where it says ISO sensitivity settings. We've got ISO 100, we need to set the ISO sensitivity to on, and then with your maximum sensitivity, set it to 1000. So if you're shooting in shutter priority mode, all you have to do is concentrate on getting the animal or bird in focus, and then the camera will set up everything else for you in terms of aperture and exposure. So as you get more advanced, you can then switch it over to manual mode or M on your dial here on the D750, and that'll give you greater control over both your aperture and shutter, which you control with both these dials front and back. While we're here on the camera in the menu on the D750, I'm just gonna go down to where it says image quality. I like to shoot in RAW because it gives you greater flexibility in post-production. So we just click on that. As well as image size, make sure that you're shooting at the largest image size possible. And then your image area as well, make sure that you're on FX. Here's one little thing about the D750 that not too many people know about. Over here on the D850, you've got the convenience of having the ISO right on top here, right next to the shutter button. Unfortunately, with the D750, it can be quite awkward changing ISO because the ISO button is actually here. Right down the back here, you'll see if you press that in, and then there's your ISO control there. So that can be a little bit of a pain when you've got to use your left hand that's normally supporting your lens, and if you've got to try and change ISO quickly, it's a little bit of a pain. Here's the thing, just like the ISO button on the D850, I can turn this record button here right next to the shutter button on the D750 as my ISO button. To do that, come back over into menu, scroll down to the little pencil icon and then come over to controls once again. Then scroll down until you get to assign movie record button scroll across there and then scroll up to ISO sensitivity and select that. So now, instead of having to awkwardly come around and press this as your ISO button, press that record button on top of the D750 and there's your ISO control. So you can now just use dials in the front and the back to change your ISO. Okay, so let's just recap very, very quickly. On the D850, I've got my AFN button as my group area autofocus, the joystick set up as the 25 point autofocus, the front preview button as the single point autofocus, and down here on the FN button, I basically set that up as spot metering. Over on the D750, my back button is set up for group area autofocus, my front preview button is set up for spot metering, as well as I've changed the record button to ISO on the D750. Same thing, continuous high on the D850, continuous high on the D750, shooting in shutter priority mode and shooting in shutter priority mode on the D850. ISO, both on the same. ISO set for a range between 100 and 1000. So remember when you're photographing birds and wildlife to hold down that thumb on that back button focus and keep the animal in the middle of your frame, in those little four dots, while you're firing away with your shutter button. So that's it. That's the way I like to set up the Nikon D750 for bird and wildlife photography. So it is very similar to the Nikon D850. Now you have to keep in mind, this D750 is over less than half the price of the Nikon D850. I still recommend that you do go and buy a Nikon D750 if you're going to be doing something like just photography. If you're going to be doing something like photography and video, then I would probably tend to go towards something like the Nikon Z6. But the thing is, the Nikon D750 is $1,000 less 
than what the Nikon Z6 is. Now Stephen did also mention that he'd like to know some lenses that he could use. Here are my recommendations. Firstly, I did write back to Stephen and I did tell him that I like to use the Nikon 80 to 400 millimeter f4.5 to 5.6 lens. Now, primarily I bought this lens, not only because it's great for travel, but it also has a very good versatile focal length. I use it for landscape, I use it for portrait. Now, the other thing about this lens is that it's very sharp. I'm quite amazed at the images that I get from it. For example, here's some that I took in Scotland at 80 millimeters. Here's a shot I took at 250 millimeters in Iceland. And here's some shots I took at 400 millimeters. If you really were going for something like a dedicated bird, wildlife or sports lens, I'd probably recommend that you look at something like the Nikon 200 to 500 millimeter VR f5.6 lens. The other lenses I recommend are the Tamron 150 millimeter to 600 millimeter f5 to 6.3 g2 lens as well as the sigma sport 150 to 600 millimeter f5 to 6.3 lens now of course after that you have your very expensive prime lenses now i don't know about you but i don't have a lazy 15k sitting around and that's at the base sitting around for a dedicated prime lens something like the nikon f4 600 millimeter lens the thing is, with those lenses that I've just recommended to you, they are a good budget range lens. And you still get very good sharp results out of them. In fact, if you wanna have a look at the Nikon 200 to 500 millimeter, I recommend that you have a look at this video from Phil Thatch. He uses it in combination with a 1.4 teleconverter and he's shooting some Ospreys. The other thing too, if you're looking at that Tamron lens, the 150 to 600 millimeter G2 lens, have a look at this video from John Knowles. He actually combines it with the Nikon D750 and you can see the type of results he gets out of that. So that's it guys, that's the video for this week. Thank you so much for watching. I really do hope it helps you out if you do have a D750 and you are looking at doing some bird and wildlife photography. Always feel free to subscribe to my channel and never stop creating and I'll see you next time.